March 2020. In this month, many of our lives will change. Many of us will become new men, forgetting our responsibilities of real life and simply playing Bannerlord for hours on end. And with this great revolution, you will need to make a choice. Which faction do I play first? Well, in this video, I'm going to try and help you make that decision by introducing you to the factions and giving you a brief overview of what they're all about. My hope is that you can get to know the factions and units a little bit to make life easier when you do eventually drop into the game. But remember, everything you see and hear in this video is still a work in progress. The game is still being worked on. It's in beta. So don't be surprised if you see something change. So prepare yourself to make one of the most important decisions of your life. The Empire, the once dominant faction of all of Calradia, now diminished and declined and split into three separate warring factions. Their army itself though is well armoured and well organised. Now we're going to take a look at the units in their army from the multiplayer beta as these are some of the units that you'll be using in single player as well. First up we've got the Manavlian Infantry. Their lengthy pole arm is so massive you can't even see it on the freaking screen. It is of course anti-cav and it's going to be great for poking them off their horses. They're lacking in the armor but they are pretty quick on their feet and there's a lot of them in the multiplayer unit. Of course that doesn't really matter in single player because you can have as many as you want. And they come with a gladius as well for up close and personal combat because that large spear isn't going to be much use when there's a man two feet in front of you. So of course this is going to be your weapon of choice unit if you want to take down cavalry, defend your flanks, protect your front line from cavalry charges. Although if you can keep that distance against infantry you'll be able to stab them up and there'll be nothing they can do to you because their weapon won't reach you. And then a unit that'll probably make up more of the bulk of your army, the legionary. These boys are well armoured, well equipped, they're a little bit slow of course because of all that armour they're carrying. In multiplayer their unit size is fairly decent, they come with a long sword, a nice shield to protect themselves and a spear as well, so they can deal with a little bit of everything. They can take out infantry with their sword, take out cavalry with their spear, and protect themselves from missiles with their shield. So a great all-rounder, a very strong frontline unit potentially, plenty of versatility to use them in many roles. And then we've got the recruit, who's currently listed as a ranged unit, but he's a little bit of both melee and ranged. He's basically a peasant with no armor, which is why you get a lot of them in multiplayer, 19 in a unit, as you can see there. He comes with a gladius, so got himself a decent one-handed sword. Also has some javelins, so he can throw those, try and take down some horses perhaps, or men. And he's got a shield, so he can protect himself a little bit. So, again, a fairly versatile unit. Not going to be quite as effective as the legionary, of course. But having those javelins does give him something the legionary doesn't have, which is, of course, ranged damage. So if cavalry is cycle charging you, at least you can throw some javelins to scare them off or do damage to them instead of having to wait for them to come to you. They can be given short spears to make them a little bit anti-cav. If you want to get fully ranged though, you could bring some archer militia. These guys are again just peasants and citizens of the empire who want to fight and help out. Which of course means they don't have much armour, but again a large unit size. They come with the gladius to defend themselves in melee and a hunting bow. Which doesn't give them a ton of range or damage, but their fire rate is a little bit quicker. But it's what you might expect for archer militia. So one of your cheap and cheerful choices for a ranged unit. And one of your more powerful range choices, the Palatine Guard. These boys have actually got some armor on. They've got a smaller unit size as a result though, only 10 men in the multiplayer unit. And their weapon of choice is the Recurve Bow, which is a little bit more damaging and will have better range than the Hunting Bow. And they come with a Spatha one-handed sword as well. So these ones will be able to trade a little bit better with other missile units because they have that armor and hopefully survive a little bit better if cavalry get a hold of them as well, although they don't really have any great weapons to deal with cavalry, so they're going to need some protection. And then onto some cavalry with the coursers first of all. Designed for hit and run tactics and scouting as you can read in the description, they're pretty powerful as they only have 9 men in their unit. Their main weapon, the western long spear, of course very good in those hit and run cycle charging situations. They also come with a one handed sword for those close range encounters, and a shield to protect themselves as well. Their horse is one-handed apparently, so you can throw this horse one-handed and it's it's really light, it's good like that. But it is quite tough and quite fast for an unarmoured horse. So a good one for rushing around the flanks and getting after those archers, they've got that shield to protect themselves from those archers a little bit, as well as the ability to just hit and run and absolutely harass them. If you want the big daddy of cavalry though, you'll bring yourself the cataphract. They come with a ton of armor at 45, but a very small unit size in multiplayer because they are so powerful. They come with the Contos spear because they are absolute cons, 
and they have a long paramurian sword as well for those close quarters situations. Their horse is very strong with 240 freaking hit points, although it is a bit slow. So these boys could be a little bit better for that hammer and anvil. If there's a unit already fighting one of yours, you can charge these guys in the back and they will absolutely ruin everybody's lives. Although of course, they are going to be pretty expensive in single player and in multiplayer, they have a small unit size. And I should mention that with all of these units, you can change their loadout in multiplayer, so it can change them up a little bit. You could add a shield to a certain unit or give them a certain weapon that'll make them better for certain things. And of course, some customization in single player as well. So things can be changed up and adjusted slightly for different roles, but this will give you an idea of what units are in the army anyway. So as you can see from those units, they have a strong unit in every category. They've got some strong infantry, they've got some strong archers, they've got some strong cavalry, which is what you might expect from a more advanced and organized civilization. They of course bear a kind of Roman air about them with the fact that they used to be a really strong power and eventually dwindled down into warring states who could potentially return to glory if you choose to lead them and you lead them well. So if you want a kind of Roman army feel to your experience then you may want to go with the Empire. You'll have the choice of the Northern Empire, Southern Empire or Western Empire each with their own values and desires for the fate of the Empire. Now the units you've seen in this video so far are all taken from the multiplayer beta, but who else is going to be in the campaign? Well, taken from the wiki, there's a bunch of units listed. Where they got them from or what their sources are, I have no idea, but I'll list them anyway and you can have a look and make of them what you will. So I'll assume you can read so you can do that bit yourself, but you've got some interesting things in there. You've got crossbowmen, you've got horse archers for the empire, you've got imperial busularii, whatever the frick they are, but they're at the top of the food chain it seems, so they must be damn good and a veteran version of the Manavlian boys, so who knows how horrible they're going to be. But there we go, there's some of the Empire troops that we can hopefully see in Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2. Vlandia. Originally adventurers and mercenaries from overseas, they became employed by the Empire and thus benefited greatly from that partnership. Eventually though, they rose up and declared their own independence. So what units do they have? We begin with Peasant Levy, the worst of the worst. These are just peasants, and although they do have no armor, that does make them a little bit quicker on their feet so they can rush up on things. Of course, there's a lot of them in a multiplayer unit as well. Their close quarters weapon is a sickle, which is pretty fast and pretty dangerous if used correctly. And they also come with a spear so they can be anti-cav in their role somewhat. So they'll do well enough fighting other light infantry, especially archers, if they can get to them without getting shot. But for the most part, they are just your cheap meat shield that will probably protect your better troops. But we go from peasants to beefcakes with the Volgers. These boys have a big ass pole axe, which they will smash into your face if you're not careful. They don't have a great deal of armor, but they're still pretty quick despite having that heavy weapon and their unit size is pretty large. The weapon itself is very powerful, hits very hard and is two handed, of course which does mean that they lack a shield, so missiles could gun them down before they get anywhere. So you do have to be careful and pick your engagements with these. If you can get them into melee though, they will shred everybody. If missiles are of a concern to you though, you'll probably want to bring the sergeant instead, as he is a bit of a tank. He's got a whole lot of armor. There's a good amount of them in a unit as well. They come with the Western Heavy Arming Sword, which is a pretty powerful sword for a one-handed sword and a shield as well. So they can fight in melee pretty well, protecting themselves with that shield and do the damage with that long sword and protect themselves from missiles. And although it's not listed here, they do have a spear as well in multiplayer by default. That's one of their loadout choices. So they can potentially defend themselves from cavalry as well if they bring spears. If not, they may need support to keep them safe from that cavalry. A good frontline choice as they're pretty sturdy and will likely make up the bulk of your late game army, although they probably won't come cheap. So to your range choices with the Arbalest, a crossbowman essentially. Crossbows much more powerful in their damage, much greater in their range, although of course much slower in their fire rate. There's a fair amount of them in the unit and they don't have a lot of armor, so they aren't gonna trade with other skirmishers very well, but they will be able to outrange most other skirmishers, so that can be a strength for them. Of course, gotta protect them from cavalry. They do have a Western short sword to defend themselves in melee, but they're of course not gonna do too great in melee, whichever way you slice it. So crossbows, very powerful if you can keep them alive long enough. Potentially great for taking out enemy bows and things because they won't be able to reach them while the crossbows can blast them from afar. And then we have sharpshooters. Again, a crossbowman, this time with even more damage, a little bit more accuracy, but they are fairly slower in their fire rate. They also have a small unit size with only nine in multiplayer. They also come with a shield and a little bit of armor so they can tough out and trade with other missile units fairly well. 
While they're firing, they can keep the shield on their back and protect their back a little bit from anything that may come up behind them, or they can bring it out front, use their sword and fight in melee. So they're a little bit more of an all-rounder as they do have the armor to survive in melee a little bit better than other missiles, but still a similar role to the Arbalists, they're just a little bit better at the job and can defend themselves. And lastly, to the strongest part of the Vlandian army, their cavalry, beginning with the Vanguard, a lightly armored flanking cavalry with a small unit size because they are overall pretty powerful. They've got a western spear for all their hit and run needs, but if they do want to get stuck into melee, they come with the powerful western heavy arming sword. They also have a pretty large shield so they can protect themselves from those missiles while they're riding around or just from any axes flying towards their face. Their horse overall is fairly quick but doesn't have a ton of hit points so you want to try and avoid that damage as much as you can. So going to be one that's going to benefit from staying out the way and surprising things like archers and just absolutely ravaging them quickly. And for one of the most powerful units that the Vlandians will present you, they're knights. These boys are of course very heavy with lots of armor on and you may notice that these cavalries are slow on foot speed so they're not very quick off their horse. A small unit size for this one as they are very powerful. They've got that western long lance again for all their hammer and anvil needs. For close quarters they've got the western heavy arming sword and a pretty hefty shield as well. Their horse is a little bit slower but is full of the hit points of course. So plenty of power to deal with all kinds of enemies, infantry, other cavalry, missiles, whatever they need to get dead, they can do it. Going to be one of the stronger points of the Vlandian army. So overall the Vlandians are said to specialize in their cavalry, especially that of the heavier variety. These knights are pretty damn powerful, especially if you couch their lances. They can be absolutely disgusting in the beta. It's pretty much a one hit kill on anything. But they do have some nice different touches like the crossbowmen instead of archers. So that gives them some range superiority, although slower damage output overall perhaps because of that reload time. And they do have some good infantry choices, although they may be the elite higher end infantry, which may take you a while to afford in single player. But with the Vlandians having their roots in the empire, you can see the similarities in their armies. So if you want that more modern advanced military, the Vlandians could be a good choice for you. They're also a bit of a feudal state, so land ownership and duties are pretty important to them. And the Vlandians will actually start with more territory than most other factions, but there is a lot of potential for internal disharmony among the faction. So if you're looking for a feudal, cav-heavy civilization, the Vlandians may be the ones for you. And as for some of the other Vlandian troops, some things you may notice, there is only crossbowmen. There doesn't seem to be any kind of archers at all, so it's going to be all crossbowmen for the Vlandians, perhaps which will be cool and make them a little bit different. They've got some billmen who could be awesome if they have a billhook, especially awesome if they can pull people off of their horses with said billhook. One thing you may notice though is a lack of the Vlandian knights that we just saw, so these aren't on that list for some reason. Like I say, take these lists with a pinch of salt, they're not necessarily concrete, as is nothing at the moment. But there is the Vlandian army for you. Batania the woodland folk who specialize in forest warfare and their archery prowess. They enjoy a spot of ambushing and general trickery. A savage Celtic style tribe. So the Batanians, some strong missiles and some pretty fun infantry as well. First up, the Clan Warrior, one of your budget melee infantry choices. They have a little bit of armor on and they're very quick on their feet with 80 speed and they have a large unit size in multiplayer. They have a fast swinging highland short sword for their melee needs and they also come with a spear by default as well which can be changed in their loadout so they could serve different roles. Like most factions this is going to be one of your first cheap starter units that will have its strength in its numbers that can hopefully overwhelm any opponents they can get a hold of. And then one of my personal favorite units from the beta, the Savage. These boys don't have much armor but they are very quick with 85 speed, they have a large unit size at 18 and they come with the Falks, a very dangerous, horrible, brutal, lovely curved sword of doom. It has a lot of damage and swings pretty quick and you can also get a two-handed larger version and although not shown here they do come with a shield by default as well which means you can one hand or put the shield on your back and two hand this Falks for extra damage. So they're of course very brutal when they get into the melee fight but they can be at high risk of getting gunned down by missiles or charged down by cavalry. So you've got to be careful with them. And their last infantry, the Oathbound. These boys are a little bit more of a tanky choice. They've got plenty of armor on. They're still fairly quick and their unit size is not too shabby. They come up with the Highland Longsword. So a fairly decent sword, lots of damage on that. 
Also a shield to protect themselves as well. It's a very big shield as well, so save you from those missiles. They also come with javelins to throw too. They don't have a spear, so they're not anti-cav in that way, but they do have the javelins, which are of course better for moving cav. So your more tanky frontline choice, although with their lack of spear, cavalry can kind of pick them apart. The javelins are only going to help them so much, so they're going to need support from other troops. Now to the strength of the battalion army, the ranged troops, beginning with the ranger. As you can see, he's got a whole load of ammo on him. He doesn't have much armor, so he's going to be a little bit vulnerable. The unit size is decent though, and they come with the short bow, which of course doesn't have the greatest range or damage output, but it does have a very high fire rate. So at close range, they are going to absolutely plaster their enemies with arrows. And if you saw all the ammo that this guy was carrying, he'll be able to pump out damage for a long time if you can keep him alive. Also comes with a short sword for his melee needs. So potentially very powerful, but going to need some protection because he doesn't have a lot of armor. Cavalry and missiles will take them out. And you do have to be careful of being outranged by other missile troops. And then we've got Jon Snow's favorite, the Wildling. These boys are more of a skirmisher with their javelins, but they are fairly well armored with 28 armor. They've got a fairly decent unit size at 15. And then they have an axe and shield to go with all that as well. So you've got those javelins for any anti-cav needs or anti-human needs. You've got a big shield to protect from missiles and you've got a nice highland axe for chopping enemy faces off which is going to do that little bit more piercing damage than any swords and things. So these boys are nice and versatile with those javelins if you can make the javelins land of course but they can double up as a good melee infantry with their armor, shield and axe. And for the big boys of the battalion ranged infantry, the Fian. They have a whole lot of armor on at 39. They're pretty slow though because they are carrying a shit ton of armor and there's only 11 of them in the unit but they do come with the longbow, giving them excellent range, decent damage, and they're still able to maintain a decent fire rate. And if they should get stuck into melee, they've got a Highland two-handed sword, so they can put out a lot of damage up in the melee, as well as from range. So again, a versatile dual roll unit, they can do the melee, they can do the range. They don't have a shield though, so they're a little bit susceptible in that way, although they should be able to outdo most missile units because of their range and armor. They are the elite of the Batanian army. And the only cavalry unit, at least in multiplayer, for the battalions, the Mounted Warrior. He doesn't have much armor on, there's only 11 of them in the unit, but they do come fairly well equipped. They've got the Highland Longspear for all their charging and stabbing needs, but if anyone gets up close and personal, they've got themselves a Highland Sword ready to smash into somebody's face, and also a pretty big shield to protect them as well. Their horse is fairly well rounded between speed and hit points too. So they're a light cavalry, they are a little bit susceptible to being taken out by heavier cavalry because they don't have a lot of armor on, but they're going to be a great flanker, a great scout, great for getting after those missiles. They'll do the role well enough to support the Batanian infantry and missiles, although they're definitely going to need some help sorting out the tougher cavalries of Calradia. So looking at the army from those units, you can see they have a bit of a cav weakness. They don't have any strong options. So they've really got to work to protect their valuable missile units, which are the strength of their army. But they do have some strong infantry for that purpose as well. So it gives them a little bit of a different play style from, say, the Empire or Volandians. So you'll need to get creative. And as I mentioned, they are kind of a forest dwelling, forest fighting folk. So that's where they'll do best. If you can find forests, they may get some kind of advantages in them. They may be able to ambush more than other factions. We'll have to see how things progress in the single player. But if you prefer those more kind of Germanic tribe-like factions, Celtic factions, utter barbarians, then these boys may be for you. These are personally probably one of the first factions I'll play. These are the Sturgeons. I'm still deciding. They're not going to be as advanced, of course, as the Empire or the Volandians with their fancy armor and fancy horses, but they'll still get the job done in their own ways. They enjoy the ambushes, the night raids, the mischievous traps, so they have to get a little bit more creative, which personally, I like the sound of. But what other kinds of troops will they have available? Well, I'll refer you to the wiki troop tree, which as you can see, has a bunch of the ones that we've already seen. Some veteran folksmen sound pretty awesome. Not a lot of cavalry on there. Maybe the wood runners are cavalry. Got picked warriors. Raiders there. They could be infantry or cavalry. Who knows? But either way, missile strength overall, some good infantry, but a bit of a weakness in the cavalry for the Batanians. From the cold north comes the Sturgeons. Their warlike mentality won't shy away from a fight, and no village is safe from a Sturgeon pillage. And their infantry does not mess about. So who are the Sturgeons bringing to the war party? Well, first off, we've got the basic warrior, of course. 
He's pretty much your simplest troop. He's got not a lot of armor, a fairly quick speed, and a large unit sizes like all the other ones. He comes with a northern wood splitter axe, so might be able to do a little bit more piercing damage than most. He can be outfitted with a short spear if you want some anti-cav, or a shield if you want some protection from missiles. Personally, I think the shield is very useful because 20 men with shields charging up on a small unit of missiles or skirmishers, they're not going to be able to shoot them all before they reach them. So they'll be able to get a hold of them and smash their faces off with that axe. And then we've got the almighty Ulfudnar. These boys are not fucking about. They've got a wolf on their head and a massive axe on their back. And they do have more health than anyone else with 110. Not seen any other units with health that high. Only a little bit of armor, but very quick on the feet at 84. But their unit size is fairly small at 11. Their northern two-handed axe will of course cave skulls in like there's no tomorrow. So a lot of potential damage output. However, a lack of shield and armor of course makes them very vulnerable to missiles or cav charges cycling them down. So they do have to be careful and positioned well, otherwise you're just going to get them shot and they'll do nothing useful. Got to make use of that foot speed and close the distance quickly. If you can get them stuck into melee with another infantry however, Odin help that unit. If you need more of a tank though than a damage dealer, you'll want to bring out the Huskars. These boys are your frontline choice with their tanky nature. They've got a whole lot of armor on, a little bit slower in the foot speed though because they're carrying a shit ton of stuff, but their unit size is pretty substantial. They've got a northern heavy axe for all their anti-infantry needs, which gets coupled up with their ridiculously massive shield, which will protect them from all manners of everything. But they can't protect themselves completely without the use of their handy spear, which will obviously help them deal with the cavalry. So if you need a bit more survivability and a tanky frontline unit, you're probably going to need yourself some Huskars. Which brings us to the range section of the Sturgeon army, beginning with the Brigand. Kind of similar to the Warrior, they don't have much armor, they are very slow though, and have a fairly decent unit size. They have a northern wood splitter axe for their melee needs, coupled with a shield, so they can survive fairly well, and they have the northern fish harpoon, so they can catch lots of fish, feed the boys on the battlefield, keep their morale up, or they could use that as a javelin and throw it at something, or they can double it up as a spear and stab any passing cavalry. So a pretty versatile unit, it can deal with infantry, lighter infantry probably, preferably, and it can throw some things at cavalry to help keep them at bay too. Or they can just be outfitted with a spear. Their lack of armor though isn't going to make them super tough. And the only other ranged unit for the Sturgeons in multiplayer, the Hunter. He is your typical lowly armored archer. He is just normally a food hunter after all. He comes with the hunting bow in that respect, so low damage, but a decent fire rate. And as you've probably guessed, he doesn't have much hope of surviving anything really. No armor, no shield. Missiles are gonna gun them down. Cavalry is gonna take them apart. Infantry is just gonna chop their faces off. So gotta be careful with their positioning. Use them well, otherwise they're gonna go to waste. They can definitely be useful supporting that Sturgeon infantry. So onto the cavalry for Sturger, beginning with the Raider. Your typical light cavalry to be honest, they got a bit of armor on, a small unit size, they come with a spear for all their stabbing face needs, and an axe for when they want to get up close and personal. In multiplayer you can outfit them with javelins if you want them to be able to put out a bit more damage potentially, or you can give them a shield to help their survivability. Their horse is nice and quick but doesn't have much armor so survivability of that can also be a problem. So what you outfit them with will determine how they're best going to be used. If you bring the javelins, you'll probably be better as anti-cab. If you bring the shield, you're going to be better off as anti-missile, perhaps. If you want the big boys of cavalry, though, you'll bring along the Drusenik. You can kind of think of them as Huskars on horses. They've got a whole bunch of armor, a small unit size because they are very powerful. They've got that northern long spear, so they can pull off a few drive-bys, a quick stab, and run off like most cavalry. They've got a northern cavalry axe for all their close quarters needs, and of course a big old shield to protect them from any range fire or anything else flying at their face. And their horse is pretty tough. Now they can be outfitted with a lance so they can couch that and just destroy everybody, or they can be outfitted with a bow so you can kind of make them into a little bit more of a skirmish cav, but otherwise you're strong support for all that powerful sturgeon infantry. So there is all the Sturgeon units. As you can see, they've got some strong infantry that can get a lot of work done, but they are noticeably weaker in the ranged department. They've only got the one longer range missile in multiplayer, and that's still short range as missiles go because it's a hunting bow, not a long bow or a crossbow or anything. So they're probably not a faction that's gonna to wanna to sit back and skirmish too much in full battles. They're wanting to be rush up, get aggressive, get pushing the enemy quickly so that they don't take a ton of range damage. And then it's going to be up to your fairly decent cavalry to try and take out the enemy missiles and stop them shredding you to pieces and helping to support your important infantry. 
So probably more of an aggressive playstyle in battle when it comes to the campaign. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, then Sturger may be more up your street like they are for me. And of course, they have their Nordic and Viking influence throughout the faction, although Tailworlds has stated that they're not a Viking state necessarily. But if you want that kind of experience, the Sturgeons may be your boys. And what else do we have to play with in campaign? Well, again, Rough Troop Tree from the wiki. You can get yourself some veteran bowmen, so you may be able to get a little bit better ranged options. you got some berserkers in there, which will of course be awesome. I imagine they'll be half naked and ready to murder. Not a lot of cavalry on there, although the Druznik are missing, so like the other one, may not be a completely accurate list, but an idea of some troops that may be in the Sturgeon army. The Khuzait Khanit. Nomad tribes from the vast steppe east, their horse clans possess powerful archers and cavalry, with a strong skirmish game. Left unchallenged, they will raid and conquer everything. So what sort of units are these boys rocking in their army? Well, first off, you've got Rabble. They don't sound like much because they're not. But they are your typical cheap light infantry, not a lot of armor, big unit size, but very quick on their feet. They come with an Eastern Infantry Club, so they can bash things, may give them a little bit more blunt damage, could be good against their armor. They can be outfitted with a shield to help keep them alive, which God knows it, they're going to need it. Or you could give them a short spear if you want them to be a little bit more anti-cav. And then we have the Spear Infantry, who is fairly well protected with a little bit of armor and a massive shield. Good unit size on them. They come with Eastern Throwing Spears. Now these can be used as javelins to throw at your enemies, or you can hold on to them and use them for all your spear stabbing desires. And like I mentioned, they do have a pretty massive shield, which will protect them well from missiles, but it doesn't have a great deal of durability. It kind of looks like it's made from wicker, so it's not going to survive very well being hit by massive axes and things, but it'll keep them safe from those missiles and help them be anti-cav, whether up close or from ranged, with those spears slash javelins. And then to the step bows. These are a fairly basic archer unit, to be honest. Low armor, good unit size. Hunting bow, so not the most powerful, but you can switch that out for a short bow, which is a little bit more powerful, but slower on the fire rate. They also come with an eastern club, so they can bash things in the face. But otherwise, like I say, fairly typical simple archer unit. But if simple archer units are no good for you, you're going to need the Khan's Guard. These boys are pretty beasty. They've got a lot of armor on, the small unit size, as you can expect. They come with a recurve bow, which is pretty powerful with its faster firing rate. But if you want to get them into melee, they do come with a two-handed polearm weapon, which isn't listed here. They're listed with a one-handed ild weapon, which is apparently a thrown sword, which makes no sense. So I guess that's just a beta bug at the moment. But yeah, they come with a powerful two-handed glaive, which can be used in melee, which of course makes them very dangerous up close and personal. Or you can give them a shield with that smaller sword if you want to help them survive a bit better when it comes to the melee. So a strong dual roll unit can do the melee, can do the range, a staple of the Khuzite army. Now to the cavalry, beginning with the Nomad. Here's your typical light cavalry, to be honest. A little bit of armor, a small unit size. Everything I've said about all the other light cavalries, except this one comes with a spear, of course. Comes with a close quarters melee weapon, of course, which apparently is thrown again. Their horse is a nice balance between toughness and speed, so they've got pretty good horses, as you might expect. But they can be outfitted with a bow if you prefer. So if you want them to be more of a skirmish cav, a light skirmish cav, you can do that if you want to. So they can provide a nice flanking ranged unit if you want that, or you could give them a shield if you want them to try and run down archers. So a nice multi-role unit depending on how you outfit them. If hefty cavalry is more your game though, you'll be bringing the Lancer. They have a good bit of armor on, not quite as much as other heavy cavs, but still a good amount. This does give them a little bit of a bigger unit size than some of the other elite cavs though, so that's something. They come with the Eastern Lance, which can of course be couched to destroy everything. They've got a strong shield to protect themselves a little bit. A nice mace for up close and personal cavalry combat, going to be good for maybe taking out heavier cavalry with that blunt damage. And then their horse is of course very tough in the hit points, but a little bit slower. But they wouldn't be a Nomad Horse Clan unit if they couldn't have a bow as well. So you can give this boy a bow if you want a heavy bow unit. So that'll give you some choices on how and where you engage your enemies. And of course, this type of faction wouldn't be complete without a dedicated mounted archer unit. So they remain to be a light cav with a little bit of armor on, still a small unit size. They've got that recurve bow, so good damage on that, good fire rate. Going to allow them to pick apart ill-defended infantry, as of course they simply won't be able to catch them. 
If they want to get up close and personal, they do have a one-handed sword. They can be given a shield if you like, if you want to try and help keep them alive a bit better. Or you can give them additional arrows so they have more ammo, which as the late game starts to come around, that could be very useful, at least in multiplayer or in single-player battles. But their horse is pretty light, so he doesn't have a great deal of hit points, and he's not crazy fast. But there is your typical mounted archer for the Kuzite Khanate. So it's no secret that this faction has its roots in the Eastern Mongol sort of era. Lots of horses, lots of mobility, lots of skirmishing and gunning things down. From the multiplayer units you can see they have a bit of a weakness in their infantry, don't have great foot infantry. The Khan's Guard is one of their best and that is of course a missile unit as well, which is where their strength lies in that ranged attack on foot or on horseback. So their skirmish game is second to none. If that's the kind of playstyle you enjoy, staying out the way of the heat of combat, picking things apart from range, then the Khuzite Khanit may be your first faction of choice. As a civilization, they used to be very unruly, attacking and raiding whenever and wherever they wanted, but eventually a leader rose up and declared supreme authority, saying that nobody could raid without his approval anymore, and that all of the clans must follow under his rule, which of course, some of the more unruly clans did not take kindly to. So a kingdom a little bit in disarray from learning to be more disciplined. And what other units are we going to have to tinker with? Well, we can see lots of horses and lots of archers, basically. You've got some heavy lancers on there. You've got marksmen, so some better bowmen, even better bowmen than they already have. You've got heavy horse archers. So pretty much just strengthening everything that they already have going for them in strong archers and strong cavalry. Still not a lot of infantry. The Asarai. These desert dwelling folk are as tough as they come, surviving out in the harsh deserts. And with the empire's weakness apparent, the Arab Asarai clans have united to take advantage of these new opportunities. So what kind of units are these Middle Eastern boys rocking? Well, first up in the infantry department, you've got the tribal warrior. Now he actually has some armor on compared to all the other cheap light infantry. He's got 19 armor and still the big unit size. So got the numbers there still. They have a one-handed sword and a nice big shield so they can protect themselves and deal out the damage well enough. So a good well-rounded unit for a cheaper unit. They will come with a spear as well so they can deal with cavalry which makes them great and versatile and a good all-rounder. Their biggest danger is probably fighting tougher melee infantry though. If you want something with a bit more damage output you can bring yourself the guard. They've got some armor on, good unit size and a big old two-handed slice your face off weapon. This is of course wonderful for doing damage, but means they can't carry any kind of shield and thus makes them very vulnerable to missiles and cav charges. Much the same as the Ulfudnar and Volgers. They can be outfitted with javelins in multiplayer, which is a nice touch and a way to deal damage to passing cavalry or to soften up infantry they're about to engage. So a strong damage dealer unit if you can get them in there safely. Onto the missile units, beginning with the Skirmisher. He's pretty much only wearing cloth, so no armor for him. A small unit size as well, which will tell you that they are actually quite powerful. Probably because they're mainly an anti-cab unit. They come with the javelins to hit that moving cab that may be running past them or towards them. They do come with a shield and a one-handed sword as well for all their melee needs. And they do have a spear, although not listed here. So they've kind of got everything anti-cab that you could want. They've got javelins, they've got the spear, they've got a shield to protect themselves if they're charged. So yeah, overall, I'd say these boys are mostly for taking out cavalry. They've got to be careful of archers, though, with that lack of armor. But speaking of archers and armor, you've got your basic archer, who in multiplayer can be given some extra armor, so he goes up to about 12 or 13 armor. So a little bit of protection, still a good unit size. Got the hunting bow, though, so not a lot of damage on that. You can switch it out for a short bow if you wish, at the expense of fire rate, of course. But for the most part, your typical archer going to want to watch out for superior ranged missiles or the dreaded cavalry. And then you've got a much stronger archer in the veteran. He's got a good amount of armor on at 32, still a decent unit size and comes with the recurve bow, which is fairly powerful, good fire rate, but that can be switched out for a long bow if you want to give them more range and maybe be able to outdo some of the shorter range missile units. Got a Kaskara one-handed sword for all their close range needs. So overall, a strong, tough ranged choice for the Asurai. And to the cavalry, first off with a Bedouin. They are going to be your typical light cavalry, of course. They've got a little bit of armor on, a small unit size. They come with the southern long spear, so plenty of damage in that, and I believe it can be couched. And if they should want to go into melee, they've got a scimitar, which is a pretty strong one-handed sword. On top of all that, they've got some javelins to throw as well. So a nice little arsenal for these boys, even being a lighter cav, they can 
play the skirmish cav a little bit with those javelins and they're one of the few if only units in the beta that has a choice of mount so you can put them on a horse which is very fast at 216 speed a little bit low on the hit points or if you do want the hit points instead you can put them on a camel which gives them a whole ton of hit points and is still pretty quick the downside being it maybe doesn't handle as well and is a bigger target but a nice flexible light cav for the Asurai nonetheless and probably the most dreaded cavalry in the beta right now, the Mamluk boys. This is the Asurai's heavy cav choice. They're pretty well armoured, but not as well armoured as other factions' heavy cav. Their unit size is a little bit bigger than some as a result. They come with a heavy scimitar, which is going to hit freaking hard up in that melee. And naturally, they come with a nice pointy stick as well in the bamboo spear for all their charging and skewering needs. They also come with a shield, albeit a fairly small one. And as for their noble steed, well it has a nice mix of both speed and hit points, so it's quick and can stay alive fairly well. And as with other heavy cavalry, they do nice charge damage as well when you run into people. So given their arsenal of weapons, they can take on pretty much anybody, their biggest threat is going to be other cav. So from looking at their army, you can see they're not really weak in any specific area, not greatly anyway. They've got fairly decent infantry, they've got good archers and good cavalry. You could say overall though that they're lacking armour in their army. Only a couple of units have a significant amount. However, their army should still present a fairly balanced playstyle because they're good in all areas. It may make their armies a little bit cheaper to run as well because they're not all paying for heavy armour. So if you enjoy a bit of Middle Eastern style warfare, then the Asurai may be the faction for you. The clans of the desert generally fight over the oasis, which is where all the water is, thus all the farming is, thus all the trade and life is. But as I mentioned earlier, given the weakness of the empire, the clans have all united under the most prestigious sultan, at least for now, and they're going to be looking for the opportunity to take advantage of the weakened empire. So that's the Asurai and what they are all about. But what other units will they have available potentially? Well, looking at this tree, you notice that the Mamluks are only a fourth tier unit, which means who the hell is going to be more powerful than them? There's a couple of units, the Ghazi and the Farisa, which I have no idea what they could be. They could be anything. They've got master archers there, so there's a few question marks, and because they're good throughout their entire army seemingly, they could get anything, infantry, missiles, or cavalry, making up the bulks of their army. So there you have it. All the factions in Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord coming out in March 2020, at least in early access. And hopefully this has introduced you to the six factions a bit more and will help you choose which one you're going to play as for your very first campaign in March 2020. Now, of course, like I said, this is in beta, so do expect some of these things to change that you've seen in this video by the time it comes out. I'll also link some of the dev blogs and wiki stuff that I use to formulate this guide, one of which you may find interesting, and that is the map of Kalradia, so you can see where all the factions start. So whichever faction you're thinking about playing, you can see who they're going to have to deal with. For example, the Valandians aren't going to meet the Kozate for a while, and the Sturgeons aren't going to see the Asurai for a long time. So that could affect your choice, depending on who you might fancy fighting or who you might not fancy fighting. But there you go. This is one of my first Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord videos, but there will likely be many more. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.